Okay, let's take a look at this simple fraction problem. And of course, this is all relative. It's simple for those of you that are, you know, uh, up to speed on your fractions. Some of you out there, probably a lot of you are, are thinking to yourself, oh, at one time I knew how to uh, do uh, fraction problems. Of course, when you're in school and you're studying fractions and you're using fractions, that's all fresh in your mind. And you can... Um, you know, be able to tackle a problem like this. So, you know, it's all relative. You know, we start learning about fractions uh, in elementary school and we continue to, um, you know, use them all throughout the remainder of, of mathematics, middle and high school, et cetera. But, you know, fractions is kind of like, let's uh, just kind of draw a little can of soup or something. You know, this has a shelf life on here, right? It expires, it's some um, date. So, you know, eventually if we don't really use this, you know, product, Okay, it's going to expire. Same thing with like fractions or math skills or any skills uh, at that. So what a lot of people would do, okay, a lot of students, what they'll do is like, okay, if I really was desperate to try to get some sort of answer with this, they would take their calculator, all right, and they would convert these fractions into decimals. Okay, they would go in there, take two, two divided by three, turn this into a decimal, one divided by five, and then they would kind of come up with a decimal equivalent. So when you would do that, or if you do that, okay, with your calculator, your your answer is going to be pretty close, but it's going to be an approximation. But you know that's um that's kind of avoiding uh, you know dealing with fractions. So you want to learn how to work with fractions and keep that skill up, especially if you're doing any kind of mathematics study, any kind of course, or or even just in general, you know, as a skill, because fractions do come up. Now, if we had a fraction like this, x over y plus 1 over z, okay, we certainly can't plug this into our calculator and get decimal estimates, okay? So, you know, we need to know how to work with fractions. All right, so with that being said, let me go ahead and introduce myself, and then we'll take a look at how to tackle this problem. So my name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And if you want to check out my full math programs, i got many, many, many courses. I'm going to leave a link uh, to my math program in the description of this video. Also, um, have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with math. So hopefully you'll consider uh, subscribing. And by the way, please uh, leave me any feedback you'd like on uh, this video. Okay, so first things first. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay, two and two thirds minus three and one fifth. Let's just kind of back things up a little bit here. So which one is the smaller number and which one is the bigger number, right? Well, this is the smaller number, right? Two and two thirds is certainly smaller than three and one fifth. So this is the larger number. Now, why do I, you know, say that? Because we have a subtraction situation going on here, a difference, okay? So let's just take a look at a simpler problem, all right? What if uh, we had two minus three, okay? Let's just forget the fraction parts and let's just focus in on two minus three, where it's smaller minus larger, two minus three. Is this the same as three minus two, all right? What do you think? This is a little pop quiz here. So two minus three, are you going to get the same answer as three minus two? No, you're, uh, you're not, okay? So two minus three is what? Well, this is negative one, okay? This is like having $2 in your pocket, okay? But then having one of your friends say, hey, you owe me $3, or you get a bill for $3, you now, okay, after you give your $2 to your friend, you still owe him or her $1, okay? So this is a negative number. So three minus two, all right? Three minus two is a positive one. This is like having $3 in money and your friend comes up and say, hey, give me my $2 you owe me. And you do that and guess what? You have a, a positive $1 left over, okay? So when you look at a fraction problem, okay? Something like this, you know, I guess the description of this video is a, a simple fraction problem, and it is a simple fraction. It's a simple looking fraction problem, but you know it requires a lot of different skills. So when you take on any kind of uh, addition or subtraction situation, especially subtraction, you know first thing you want to do is just notice. Okay, is this is a smaller 
uh, you know, is the first number smaller than the second number? Because if it is, our answer here is going to be negative, okay? All right, so with that in mind, we now need to go ahead and get into solving this problem. All right, so let me erase this. We haven't even started yet, right? And we're like, okay, hey, boy, you know, we haven't even started and, uh, you know, we have to, you know, stop and think about this problem. Now, there's a couple different approaches you can you can uh, take to um, subtract these problems. This is what we call mixed numbers, okay, in fractions. So here, real quick, let's just do this real fast. So we have one-fifth, uh, let's say seven-thirds, and then two and one-eighth, okay? So these are th uh, three examples of uh, fractions, okay? This guy right here we would refer to as an improper fraction. I'm sorry, a proper fraction, okay? That means that the numerator, this top number, is smaller than the bottom number, okay? So this is a proper fraction. This is an improper fraction. Now, why is that? Well, it's because the numerator, the top number, is bigger than the denominator, okay? So this is proper. This is improper. And this guy over here we refer to as a mixed number, okay? Mixed number. All right, so we have these two mixed numbers. And what we want to do when you're dealing with fractions is turn these mixed numbers into, um, I'm sorry, yeah, turn these mixed numbers into improper fractions, okay? So let's go ahead and do this now. I already did this work, but let's just uh, uh, set this up. So we have three times two. Oh, wait, let me just back up here. What we're going to do is change these mixed numbers into an improper fraction. And most of you, I'm sure, know how to do this. So we're going to take this, this denominator, three, multiply it by two. That's six. Then add this little number here, two, right? So 6 plus 2 is going to be 8 thirds, okay? So you need to know how to change a mixed number into an improper fraction. And let's do the same thing here. So we got 5 times 3. That's 15. Then we're going to add this, this uh, little numerator. So 5 times 3, 15, plus 1 is 16 over 5, okay? So at this point we are ready to kind of continue on and start thinking about the lowest common denominator. So first things first, we want to change this problem uh, from mixed numbers into improper fractions, and then we can start thinking about the lowest common denominator. All right, so let's go down here. And so we have 3 and 5 um, are the denominators here, okay? So we have 3 and 5. So what is the lowest common denominator? Okay, what's the lowest number that both 3 and 5 have in common? Okay, as multiples. This is a whole other separate situation. I don't want to go uh, too far into um, the lowest common denominator because this is, you know, a, in, a topic in and of itself. But the lowest common denominator for this problem is 15. Okay, so, uh, so one thing you kind of think about with lowest common denominator is uh, multiples. But I got um, a lot of videos on how to find the LCD on my YouTube channel. And of course, you want to uh, really get my complete math instruction, just check out my math program below. But hopefully, I'm just kind of assuming most of you were like, mm, okay, yes, you know, I, I know that the uh, LCD here for this particular problem is 15. Now, if you didn't know that, okay, and if you're like completely lost at this point, then clearly use this video as feedback that you really got to brush up on your fractions, okay? So, uh, you know, this simple, quote unquote, simple, you know, fraction problem already has a lot of things that we're, you know, we have to consider. First of all, we have to consider is our final answer going to be positive or negative? And then now we need to know how to uh, change a mixed number into an improper fraction. And then obviously we need to know how to find LCD. So <laughs> these are the skills that we've had to employ so far, okay? All right, now at this point, we have eight thirds minus uh, 16 over five. So we know that the LCD, okay, is 15. So instead of this denominator being three and this denominator being five, we wanna have a common denominator. So our common denominator our lowest common denominator is 15, so we have to change each denominator into 15. So to change this denominator into 15, I have to multiply by 3, and to change this denominator into 15, I have to multiply it by 5. But if I multiply 
the denominators by these respective numbers, I also have to multiply the numerator by that same number so I don't change the actual value of the problem, okay? So that's what we're doing right here, all right? So I'm gonna multiply this denominator by five so I can get a 15, but I have to multiply the numerator by five over here. Then I'm gonna multiply this denominator by three so I can get a 15, but I also now I have to multiply the uh, this denominator by three. Uh, then I have to multiply this uh, numerator by three. Okay, so hopefully I didn't mess any of that <laughs> description up. A lot of numerators and denominators flying around. All right, so at this point, when I do all this number crunching, you end up with 40 over 15 minus 48 over 15. So this is good, right? So we're at a good spot so far. Now, at this point, let's just kind of re revert back to this part of the problem. So right here, okay, we couldn't do anything because we don't have the same denominators, okay? If the, if the denominators were the same, then we can simply uh, uh, subtract the numerators, okay? So that's what we want to get. So at this point, uh, because we didn't have the same denominator, we had to go through all this craziness, right? <laughs> and now we have the same uh, denominator over here. And at this point, what we can do is rewrite this problem, 40 over 15 minus 48 over 15. We could just put this over one fraction bar because now we have common uh, the lowest common denominator. So this, now we can think of as 40 minus 48 over 15. And this really unlocks the final solution because I can go ahead and subtract 40 minus 48. You got to be very, very careful, right? Because we, we said this final answer is going to be negative. So 40 minus 48 is not 8, okay? It is negative 8. And then we just put that over our answer or denominator here, which is 15. And also, a couple things here. Um, obviously, if you can uh, uh, reduce this fraction, you definitely want to reduce it, okay? One thing that I would strongly advise not doing is the following in fraction problems. Not this particular problem. Uh, by the way, this is our final answer, okay? So if you got that right, good job. Um, now, one thing that you don't want to do unless you're instructed to do so, and I see this problem all the time, is students going, okay, let's say your final answer is seven-thirds. Okay, if you have an improper fraction, don't take this answer. As long as it's fully simplified, okay, do not take this answer and turn it into a mixed number. In other words, don't go, all right, I got to go three, it goes into seven. How many times? That's two. Two times three is six. Remainder of one, two, and one-third. Don't do this, okay? unless your teacher uh, tells you to do this, because I've seen thousands and thousands and thousands of mistakes where the student had the right problem or the right answer, okay, as an improper fraction, it was fully reduced. If, if they gave me this answer, I'd give them full credit. But what they <clears throat> did was they turned in, they were trying to be good students, you know, they were trying to do the right thing, but they set themselves up uh, for trouble because they went through all this calculation and they gave me a mixed number equivalent, which they thought was a mixed number equivalent, and then they made an error in this calculation. And guess what? They gave me something like two and one fifth or whatever, and I would, you know, unfortunately have to take points away from them. But, uh, you know, I was never a bad, bad teacher. I wouldn't take the full points. If they did all this right, I'd just try to, you know, I would uh, take some points away, right? Now, some teachers out there would just be like, ah, totally wrong, everything else. For me, I was trying to be a little bit, you know, sympathetic. If they showed me all their work, and you want to do that for sure when you're in math class, show all your work, because if you do, you know, make an error at the very end, at least your teacher can give you some, uh, you know, credit, hopefully, um, here. But if, you know, if you're doing like a multiple choice test or, you know, you don't have any room for error, you know, again, don't take this step unless you're told, hey, put your answer in a mixed number form. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. So, uh, you know, it's really uh, relative whether this was a simple problem or not a simple problem. You know, the, the math, you know, especially arithmetic, okay, what we're dealing with here, it's not simple, okay? There, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of skills and concepts that we start learning early, early on you know, in elementary school, you know, just even the concept of counting, okay, and numbers, 
You know, it was like thousands of years before even the concept of zero came along. So don't underestimate arithmetic, okay? You have to master arithmetic, what, what you know, dealing with fractions and, you know, is part of arithmetic. You don't, it's not quote unquote elementary basic math because algebra is nothing more than, um, you know, a variable placeholders for numbers. Okay, so everything we've learned and arithmetic carries over into advanced math, okay? So master the basics, master the fundamentals, and of course, fractions are a big part of that. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventure. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.